Life originated as a result of natural processes that exploited early Earth's raw materials. Scientific models of life's origins almost always look to minerals for such essential tasks as the synthesis of life's molecular building blocks or the supply of metabolic energy. But this assumes that the mineral species found on Earth today are much the same as they were during Earth's first 550 million years, when life emerged during the Hadean Eon. A new analysis of Hadean mineralogy challenges that assumption. Thousands of mineral species known today were not present during the Hadean Eon. They are the direct result of growth by living organisms such as shells and bones, as well as life's chemical byproducts such as oxygen for photosynthesis. In addition, hundreds of other minerals that incorporate relatively rare elements such as lithium, beryllium, and molybdenum appear to have taken a billion years or more to first appear. It's difficult to concentrate these elements sufficiently to form new minerals, so those slow-forming minerals are also excluded from the time of life's origins. Carnegie's Robert Hazen compiled a list of every plausible mineral species on the Hadean Earth and concludes that no more than 420 different minerals would have been present at or near Earth's surface. This is a mere 8% of the nearly 5,000 species found on Earth today. This is a consequence of the limited ways that minerals might have formed prior to 4 billion years ago. Most of the 420 minerals of the Hadean Eon form from magma, which is molten rock that slowly crystallized at or near Earth's surface, and the alteration of those minerals when exposed to hot water. Fortunately for most origin-of-life models, the most commonly invoked minerals were present on early Earth. For example, clay minerals, sometimes theorized by chemists to trigger interesting reactions, were certainly available. Sulfide minerals, including reactive iron and nickel varieties, were also widely available to catalyze organic reactions. However, borate and molybdate minerals, which are relatively rare even today, are unlikely to have occurred on the Hadean Earth and call into question origin models that rely on those mineral groups. Several questions remain unanswered and offer opportunities for further study of the paleomineralogy of the Hadean Eon. For example, the Hadean Eon differs from today in the frequent large impacts of asteroids and comets. There were thousands of collisions by objects with diameters from 1 mile up to 100 miles. Such impacts would have caused massive disruption of Earth's crust with extensive fracture zones that were filled with hot circulating water. Such hydrothermal areas could have created complex zones with many exotic minerals. This study also raises the question of how other planets and moons evolved mineralogically. Hazen suggests that Mars today may have progressed only as far as Earth's Hadean Eon. As such, Mars may be limited to a similar suite of no more than about 400 different mineral species. Thanks to the Curiosity rover, we may soon know if that's the case. The research is published in American Journal of Science. With the independence for nimble pursuit, Carnegie scientists tackle some of the most profound challenges in modern science, fundamentally changing what's possible for us, our planet, and our universe.